Hello everyone and welcome to the second iteration of trying to locate a sound source with the help of microphones. Last time I covered the overall setup and first triads to determine a sound source from five microphones. The setup showed that the overall principle behind using microphones to locate sound is valid, but the implementation was insufficient. The sound source could only be determined by directly blowing into a microphone. As this is not the way the setup is supposed to work, the work on this project will be continued. This video shows small setup adjustments and major software changes. The old setup will be reused and improved. Before jumping into the changes I did, I quickly want to cover the requirements that are required for this video. First, you might watch the previous video about this project to get an idea about what should be accomplished and what I did last time. Everything from there will be viewed as given in this video. Second, I will utilize linear systems theory and the frequency domain in this video. If you don't know about these topics, I will explain them very oversimplified in the next chapter, but you might want to do some additional research about these topics. Because I simplify, I will also skip sources. That should be it for the requirements, let's get to the changes. As I just said previously, I will view the contents from the last video as given and skip them. Before I cover the design changes, I want to cover some theory about linear systems and the frequency domain, as both are required for the changes. An analog electrical signal, like the one produced by a microphone, describes a changing voltage over time. The form of a signal can pretty much take any form that is constrained by the source. Viewing signals over time is usually done and pretty useful in itself, but there's another way of how you can view and use the signal. This other way is done by looking at a given signal and determining with which combination of harmonic waves, like a sine wave, the signal can be reconstructed. The resulting amplitudes for each frequency is the description of a signal in the frequency domain. To illustrate, let us look at this example. The signal shown here is a pure sine wave with a period of 1 second. This means that the frequency is 1 Hz. The signal also has an amplitude of 1. When transforming this signal from the time domain to the frequency domain, we can see that it looks quite different than in the time domain. The reason is that we can describe the same signal by only two parameters, the frequency and the amplitude of this frequency. This method is the base for modern electronics to play digital sound. When adding a signal with a frequency of 2 Hz and an amplitude of 0.5 to the previous signal, we directly see the change in the frequency domain. Now the signal is described by two frequencies, each with their own amplitude. Linear systems theory gives us the tools to manipulate signals with a certain characteristic. One example is a lower frequency signal like 50 Hz, which has a lot of noise with high frequencies. A specific linear system called low pass filter can reduce the effect of the noise and preserve the original signal. That is because, as the name implies, it lets low frequency pass and reduces the amplitudes of high frequencies. The frequency at which the filtering occurs is determined by the system's components. One example is this low pass filter that consists of two passive components, a resistor and a capacitor. The cutoff frequency is determined by this formula right here. The last theoretical part is for transforming a discrete digital signal to the frequency domain. Here we need to consider some theory that I will not cover. This basically boils down to reducing the amplitudes as we go to the start and end of the overall signal. This reduces artifacts in the next step, which is the domain transform. The transformation from the time domain to the frequency domain is done with the help of the discrete Fourier transform, or short DFT. In computer programs, this transform is implemented in a certain way to be more efficient and is called FFT. Enough with the oversimplified theory, let's get to the design changes. The first changes are done in the hardware setup. The easy design change is to add a horn-like shape to each microphone. The goal of this is to narrow the range of each microphone in which sound is picked up. This should reduce overlapping pickup of the individual microphones. The slightly more complicated change is to add a low pass filter to each of the microphone outputs. The filter is specifically designed to cut off frequencies greater than 4.98 kHz. This frequency comes from a combination of the maximum sampling speed of the microcontroller and available components in my workshop. The low pass filter will reduce unwanted effects that will occur during sampling. This is defined by the Nyquist theorem, which states that one shall sample with at least twice the frequency than the highest frequency in the signal. The last quick addition is to add a 1 mF capacitor to the power rail to reduce voltage spikes that might affect the microphone signals. Next up are the changes in software. Generally, the structure of the old program was kept. This means that the program samples for a specified time and determines the angle based on some metric. This metric was changed in the new programs. For all new programs, I adjusted the ADC prescaling to the fastest possible conversion. 
This means that I can sample all microphones within 75 microseconds, which is equivalent to a sampling frequency of roughly 13.3 kHz for all five microphones. A first new program calculates the FFT for all microphones. After that, the microphone with the largest mean frequency amplitude is determined and used as the final angle. This means that as last time, the program has a resolution of 45 degree steps for the angle. The second program is very similar to the first one, but has a difference in the usage of FFT values. In this program, the microphone with the maximum amplitude is determined for each frequency band and saved in counters. The final angle is determined by choosing the microphone with the maximum counts. That was a lot of theory and planning, let's move on to the realization. Now it's time to put the design changes into the real world. First I modeled up a horn-like shape in FreeCAD that fits around the microphone. The parts were then 3D printed in PLA. Mounting them showed that some fit quite good around the microphones, others required some tape around the microphone to hold the horn in place through friction. Each microphone then got a low-pass filter, for which I chose a resistor of 68 ohms and a capacitor with 470 nanofarads. In addition, I added the 1 millifarad capacitor to the power rail. That is it for the hardware changes, the software is up next. First I reused the old program from the previous video and removed the part in the determined angle method. I then took the code from one of the examples that come with the Arduino FFT library and added the code for each microphone. I wrote two programs to use the two different methods for utilizing the frequency data from the FFT. This is done in the calculate angle method. Lastly, I changed the ADC prescaling to 16, which results in a sampling time of around 50 microseconds for one microphone. For the FFT programs, I used a sampling frequency of 10 kHz and a sample size of 16. The sample frequency is limited by the hardware limits of the ADCs, the number of samples is limited by the available memory of the microcontroller. Choosing any greater number of samples resulted in instability of the microcontroller. With the changes covered, let us take a look on some tests. Testing the setup is straightforward and similar to last time. I enabled the servo to indicate which microphone was determined to be in the direction of the sound source. This time, instead of using my own voice, I used a frequency generator app on my smartphone to act as the sound source. This gives me more control over which frequencies are present in the sound source. First I tested the old program. The setup is able to determine the correct location of the sound source, but only if I hold the speaker close to the microphones. The second test is for the first FFT program, which calculates the overall average of all frequency amplitudes and then compares all microphones. This setup showed some promising results, as it gets the direction right sometimes. When changing the frequency of the frequency generator, the system performs better for higher frequencies. The last test is for the second FFT program, which compares all frequency amplitudes each and determines the direction from counters. The tests show that the setup cannot determine the direction as good as the previous program. Changing the frequency of the frequency generator did not solve this issue. For each program, I also did a test with speaking, only the second program got the direction right sometimes. Also, the FFT programs took a total of 31 milliseconds for one cycle. With the tests done and shown, let me conclude my findings. This iteration of the project showed overall more promising results than the first iteration. The setup was modified to narrow down the range for picking up sound for each microphone. A low-pass filter was added to each microphone to minimize issues during sampling and in the FFT later. The power rail was stabilized by adding a 1 millifarad capacitor. While the old program and the second FFT program did not work as intended, but only for a very small distance between the speaker and the microphones, the first FFT program showed some promising results. During the preparation of the tests, I found out that at this point, I am very limited by the hardware of the microcontroller, mainly the memory. A number of samples of 10 with a sampling frequency of 10 kHz means that the program samples for a total time of 1 millisecond. This is by far not enough to evaluate human speech, which takes at least several 100 milliseconds per word. This, together with the total time required to process the sampled data, shows that the setup would take too long to process several 100 milliseconds of sampling data. This project is currently not in a state where I would close it, meaning that I have some plans for the next version. First up, the main change will be to swap out the microcontroller. The test showed clearly that I am hardware limited for what I want to do. Currently, I plan to use a Teensy microcontroller because it is much faster and has a lot more memory than the Arduino Nano. The second change will be some more sophisticated processing of the FFT results. Instead of just taking the average and compare it, I want to try out to somehow extract the sound source from the background noise. It has been a while since I uploaded, especially for this project. As usual, I am still pretty busy with my studies and had a lot of other stuff going on. 
The fact that I work on several projects in parallel also does not help to finish one project at a time. At least it looks like I will finish several things close together, so I might upload multiple videos in a relatively short time. Anyway, I still plan to continue working on this little project, because I want to implement it at some point in GLaDOS. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.